Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sue and I'd just like to share how I can help you to create beautiful artistic floral images. So today we're going to be working on this image here on the screen but before we get going I'd just like to show you how many other images I've created just from this one and it's surprising when you look back in your catalogue just how many images you've got and how many different looks you can get. So let me just take you through quickly. That was one I did quite a while ago using, I think it was the twirl in Photoshop. This one was using, well, I think that was using twirl as well. This one here. This one was uh, using the, the orb, that's the polar co coordinates to create an orb, which I quite like. And I think finally that was where I started processing this particular image. So here is the final image. Let me just show you what I started with. This was taken at Birmingham Botanical Gardens. As you can see, it's got a very busy background, but I never thought about this at the time. I was still learning how to use the camera. And this is always the problem with going to gardens. There's nine times out of 10, quite a busy background. And if that's what you're looking for, that's fine. But sometimes to create a nice artistic image, you need to make a few changes. So let's see what we can do. So as I say, this is what we want to end up with. So here's our image that we need to work on. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Quick Selection Tool. I'm going to select the subject. Now Photoshop's going to work out what it wants to select. And fortunately, because we've got bright pink on a green background, it's done quite a good job of selecting. The only thing we need to do now is to refine the selection a bit. So up here, you've got the plus and the minus. So what we're going to do is we want to take some parts of it out. So we'll click the minus. So we'll work it like this. Then click the plus to reselect what you want. We'll take that little green bit out there if we do it. If not, we can always do that in select and mask. That's another little bit there. I mean, the, the better you select the subject now, the less you have to do in select and mask. I'm not going to select the stem because I think we're going to make a new one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into select and mask. Right, so here we are in select and mask. I've got it on a white, back, white background so I can see it easily. But I think I've mentioned in other videos you can have it on different different settings, onion skin, overlay, black, but I've got it on white. Everything is easy to see. Now if we come down here, you can actually say remember the settings. And what it will do is it will retain the settings you used last time. But depending on the image, depends on whether you want to keep the same settings. You can actually alter these as well but then it will revert back to the settings you had originally. So I've got them on 20 at the moment. I've clicked the smart radius. I've got it on 10 for smooth. 5.2, you could put it on around five. And shift edge minus 60. So if you, for start, if we look at feather, you can see what feathering does. It basically really softens the edges. But I don't want to soften them too much at this stage, so we'll leave it on five. I don't usually mess around with the contrast. Shift edge, I've got it on 60. Now, if I push the slider right up, and it does take your computer a bit of time to catch up, you can see what it's done to the edges, and that's not a nice look. Because what's happening is as well, it's bringing in the background. 
around the edges. So I'm going to take it back down to around 60. So if you type it in, it's easier. So it's minus 60. There we go. Now, does it need anything, anything doing to it before we, before we send it back to Photoshop? Let's just have a look. We've got the Define Edge Brush tool here, so we'll click that. And we need to be on plus, believe it or not. It sounds a bit silly, but we need to be on plus to take away some of the bits we don't want. So just come down with your, with your brush and take out the bits that you don't want. Might take a bit of time for your computer to catch up. There's not an awful lot that needs to be doing to this. I'm not going to be messing about too much with it because we're going to be masking it out finally anyway. So I think that will do. What we'll do now is we'll come over to here again. We'll click decontaminate colours and just output to a new layer. That will give you a cutout. So we'll say OK to that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our background. Now I've already got my background sorted and basically what that is, that is a blurred image of the dahlia. You'll see my previous videos, how I make a new background. So if you go back to one of my videos, you can check that out there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on this background, this, this dahlia. And we're going to move it onto the background. So click your move tool. Hold your mouse button down. Take it up to the background and bring it back down. Now what I will say is check the size of your background. So if you go into image size, my background is the same size as my original image. And that's where you'll change it. OK, now what we need to do is we need to resize this flower because it's obviously too big for the background anyway. So we're going to go into pre-transform. Make sure you're on the, the flower cross out. Go into pre-transform and you see all these handles here. We can actually bring it in. You can even do it at a different orientation if you want to. You can move it around. And I think that's probably about it. Click the tick or press enter to say yes to the selection. There is a little hole I can see on this petal. And if we zoom in, it is quite noticeable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the spot healing tool and make it the same size and just click once. Don't need to do an awful lot to this because it's going to be blurred partly out anyway. I can see there's probably another little spot there, and you could also go around and correct, correct that. There are no other blemishes on this flower. Zoom out again. I'm going to give this flower a new stem. So, what I've done over a period of time is saved bits and pieces of leaves, stems, that sort of thing. And what I've done is they're all on a separate layer, just on one sheet. And I've named them all so I know what they are, whether it's a rose leaf or a dahlia stem. So I'm going to pick this dahlia stem here. So click on that. And select the move tool. And do the same. Hold your mouse button down, drag that up to copy and bring it down. Don't worry about that because this is all going to be blurred out anyway to say yes. Now to change the position of the stem, I'm going to go up to pre-transform while we're on this layer. And as I say, you can angle it any way you wish. 
to make it look natural. Resize it. Now, to get the stem behind the flower, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this layer down behind the cutout, which now has effectively put it behind the flower. So let's start doing some masking. We'll, we'll attempt it on the flower first of all. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a mask on, on the background copper which is where the cutout is. Over here, we need to make sure the foreground is black because basically what that will do is bring the background in. If you select the white, it will bring the flower in. Select your brush tool, get a nice soft brush. You'll be able to size the brush later. And I'm doing this in increments of 25%. So you can have a bigger brush or a smaller brush as you like. So we're just going to paint around the edges. Don't do anything to the stem because the stem is on a different layer. Now you'll see in your mask where have you gone round with your brush. So let's try another, another one, another 25%. looking quite nice. Let's try it again. You don't have to be really precise. I'm going to do a quick sweep over the whole of the flower. Big brush. Just take it all over the whole of the flower. Small brush again. Another 25% around the edges. I think you've probably got the gist of this by now. Right. So let's have a look at the stem now. So we've got a mask for the stem. Select the brush. Soft round. About 75%. And I'm just going to deal with that dark edge. So zoom in, select your brush, 75%. Don't have to be terribly accurate. This could be blurred out anyway. Okay, now back to 25%. Let's take some of the bottom of the stem out. If you do it in increments, a bit at a time, and don't try and don't try and rush it. Depends on how blurred you want the stem. Blur that out there at the top. And let's have a look at that. I think a little bit more blurring at the bottom. Take the brush tool, make sure you're on the black. Okay, I think that's about it. Now I think what I'll do is just bring the flower, the centre of the flower back in a little bit. So I'm going to switch to white, get my brush, 25% again. Big brush. And just bring that centre in, back in a little bit. So that your eyes will go to the centre of the flower. Now 
Now you may want to leave it at that. But when I posted this on Facebook, I actually applied oil paint filter. So let's have a look how I do that. So I'm actually on the cutout, on the layer of the cutout. I'm going to go up to filter, stylize, oil paint, and accept the same settings as I usually do. Sometimes I'll click lighting, sometimes I won't. There's a slight effect because obviously it improves the lighting, so it improves the brush strokes. Sometimes I like to click that, it depends what effect I get. So I'm going to say OK to these settings here and I've clicked the lighting. Say OK. Now that's quite a lovely effect if you zoom in. Now you can do another pass of oil paint if you wish. And that's another one. So if you say OK to the same settings, you can switch lighting off. That makes a bit of a difference, makes it a bit softer. So let's zoom out. And yes, I think that looks that looks rather nice. I think we just need to clone a bit and um, mask a bit of that stem out because I can still see the stem. So we'll do that. So let's go back to the stem. Select the black brush tool. You can always go back to these things because they're on separate layers. Go back to the brush tool. In fact, I'll up it to 100 and 100. I'll just take it out completely. And that looks a lot better. Finally, if you want to, you can crop. So make sure you're on the background. And bring the background in. So I haven't got so much empty space. And so, okay, we'll click the tick. And that looks brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, when you're saving, don't go and save it over your background. So save it as something else. That was the file number of my original image. So if we go back to the one that I posted on Facebook and the one we've just done, I just want to thank you for watching the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. So until the next video, bye for now.